okay, I didn't see you there. Do you want a van tour? Come on in. Welcome to our van. This is our 2020 Ram Promaster 159 Extended that my husband and I built into a camper van. We're gonna give you a quick little tour on how we built this out. One of the first updates we did was put on two swivel seats up front so we can turn these and have some extra seating. Right up front, we have this step which houses our heater and also has a couple extra cubbies for storage. Above the bench, we did install a max air fan for some extra airflow. And then here we have a bench with a lagoon mount and a Corian table. So we can sit here and do some work and play cards. This table does swing out, so if anybody was sitting in the front and driver's seat, they could also use it. Underneath the bench, we do have extra storage and that is also where our heater is housed. Up top, we have two little storage spaces. This is going to be where all of our internet connectivity is and other just little electronics we have and this for whatever else we have. <laughs> we did make all of the cabinets with soft close hinges and then an elbow latch. All right, moving on. Let's move on to the kitchen, my favorite place. We'll start with our isotherm 130 liter fridge. This is the big fridge. I just wanted to have a lot of food and storage. So Brian loved that I went with the big fridge, didn't you? Yeah, we built <laughs> design around. Yeah. Up top, we have our induction cooktop. Our counter is made out of Corian solid surface. We went with the half inch, so it was a little bit lighter. The color is deep anthracite. So it's black with little pretty white flecks in it. On the slider in the rear door, we do have two bug walls. In this dreaded area that anybody building a ProMaster knows about, it's just an awkward area, Brian built me a spice rack. Moving over here, we have our sink and faucet and a water purifier. Um, we want the faucet that has a little retractable head so we can spray each other, wash dishes, all that stuff. Above the kitchen, we have the kitchen cabinet, um, just extra storage over here. In between the fridge and the sink, we do have three large drawers. When Brian was building this van, he kept in mind if anything ever happens, if the water tank leaks, if there's a short somewhere, he wants to be able to remove it easily. So underneath the sink, the corner of the cabinet is easily removable. So if anything happens and we need to take the water tank out, we can do that. Moving over here to Brian's favorite area of the van, the bathroom. We have our shower and then we have a nature's head composting toilet. To close up the bathroom, we do have a Nautilus retractable door. We did get a customized stainless steel shower pan as well. Over here, we've got two doors. The top door is our, there's Brian, <laughs> <laughs> is where our ducting is for our air conditioner. And it's also another little storage area. The bottom houses the rest of the air conditioner. You might be wondering what this little door behind me is for. And that this is- This door? What's behind door number three? This is just a little door to the garage. Right now I have our dirty clothes hamper um, right in there, so it's easily accessible. So Brian's dirty underwear can just get out of my way. <laughs> he stinks. It's, wow, rude. Because I am a shorty, I do have to have a step stool to get into the bed. So let me get that. Ta-da! Okay, up here is our closet area. So it's a his and hers. So Brian gets one side and I get the other side. And like I said, all of these have soft closes and then a latch at the bottom, so nothing falls out. We tested that yesterday and it was great, nothing fell out. Above the bed, we have two touchable reading lamps, just in case we wanna read a book at night. <laughs> yep. Brian doesn't read, I read. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> just kidding. Let me stop. For the bed, we do have a full-size bed, which is 75 inches, Yes. right? Long, not wide. When Brian was building this in the early stages, he made the head and the foot recessed, so we had a little bit of extra room. So Brian, who's 5'11", yep. it's about six foot, 5'11". Yeah, it's just, you know, just right here, five, six foot, six foot. Five foot. He can, he can comfortably lay down. Yeah, mostly. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Your feet do touch, but whatever. <laughs> it's not that bad. That does it for the pretty of the van. I'm gonna let Brian take over the guts of the van. So let's start with the outside of the van for the technical stuff first. We have four 200 watt rich solar panels on top of the roof with our max air fan and also a cell phone antenna 
and our Starlink mount. We have a pivot mount on that side. We have made a maximum so far of 780 watts with this solar, which uh, if you're into solar, that's pretty good for 800 watts of panel. I am running two series, two parallel. So I have about 90 volts coming into my solar controller and that allows me to run a little, uh, you know, if something, sh one of the panels is shaded, I'm still making power with the other set of panels. So that's why I did two parallel and two series. I will just do a quick rundown of in here and then we'll get to the guts in the garage area of the van where all of the technical stuff is. First, I, I just wanted to start with my power ports. What I did is I split this and I have 110 here and then in a separate area, I put my 12 volt in a blank so it would fit I had to trim the shroud a little bit, the plate just a little bit to get this to fit. But what this does is it makes it so I can change these out if they fail without taking the wall down or having a weird little square that it mounts in. It just looks a little nicer and I, I really like it. I think it turned out great. The main brains of the system are down here in our Victron. We can monitor everything going on with the van. On this screen, I can check my water tanks. I can check my bridge temperatures. I can check how much power is going in and out of solar, alternator charger, literally everything electrical with the van can be done with that screen or through my phone. Um, and I'm also the Cruise and Comfort air conditioner that we have. It also has an, a phone app that you can use to control it. I haven't set it up yet. I've been a little busy, but uh, hopefully soon I'll get that done. On the panel, we have our heater which is a s-bar gasoline heater that plugs right into the gas tank of the van on this is our cooktop it <laughs> didn't like that and this is our water heat so i put the switch in the wall here because our inverter is a 3000 watt inverter and i can't run the water heater and our induction cooktop at the same time so i added them to the same circuit and a switch that allows us to run one or the other that way no one <laughs> makes a mistake and accidentally runs two at once and trips the inverter off. So this is kind of a little fail safe. On the bottom of the panel, we have three touch sensitive cabinet lights. We can turn them on and then hold the dim and set it any way we want. We also have a 12 volt power plug, a 110 power plug, our cruising comfort thermostat with fan control. And then we also have a water pump button up here. And there is a second water pump button, which I will show you guys when we get to the back of the van. On each side of the shower, we put dimmers. The bed side of the shower, there are two lights in the ceiling. And on this side of the shower, there are three lights in the ceiling, plus the shower. Why we did that is so we could have a living room light and also have a bedroom light. So these three lights are dimmable. The shower light as well is dimmable and also our bedroom lighting is dimmable. And that way we can shut everything off except for the bedroom lighting. And then when we get in bed and we're ready to go to sleep for the night, we just turn it off and it's right there. So real quick in our internet cabinet, it is not housed here yet. I do have a sub panel in here. We're also going to put our router, our cell phone uh, stuff in here and our Starlink will all live in this area. So we'll be able to have Starlink connectivity and cellular connectivity for working from the road. I did add a fan in here because I figure this cabinet's probably gonna get a little warm. So that's just kind of a placeholder right now, but we don't really need it because we don't have that stuff yet. Speaking of fans, I added an intake fan to the side of our fridge cabinet. And we also did a vent on the top back of it to keep the ventilation in the fridge hopefully from keeping everything warm, especially since our cooktop is immediately on top of the fridge. So that's kind of a trial we're doing right now. If I have to upgrade my fan, I will. It's a four inch, they do make a six inch. And we got this fan from technically Amazon, but they do make a bigger fan. If we need it, we can use it. So far it's been cool, it's hard to test it. In the back of the van, we'll start with the easy stuff first. We have our fill port. It's a gravity fill. We did not do a city fill uh, port for pressure. Just easier, it was simpler on my brain. We have an outdoor shower port that's plumbed in. And earlier when I mentioned we had another water pump, we can also turn the water pump on back here and use our shower port without having to go in the van with dirty feet after a hike or whatever we're doing. I also added this sea level tank monitor, and this is also interfaced in the Victron screen up front. So I can check my fill for my fresh tank and gray tank back here and also on the screen up front. So when I'm filling the tank back here, I can 
I can either visually look at it or I can check that monitor and tell how full the tank is or is not. Over the wheel well, we have a 32 gallon water tank for fresh water. And above that, I have my water pump and some of the wiring for the water pump. Behind it, I have my water heater, which is a 1,440 watt electric water heater. And it holds four gallons, so it should be enough for us to shower in here. Uh, we haven't tried it yet, <laughs> but it's there if we need it. And we can also wash our feet with warm water if we need to. Now to the meat of the build and the electrical system. It's all Victron. We have a 3000 watt Victron Multi Plus inverter, and that's powering all of our 120 volt power receptacles, our water heater, and our induction cooktop. Right above it, we have our main shutoff and fuses with our battery shunt so we can measure the state of charge and how much power is going in and out of the batteries. Speaking of batteries, we have four SOK 206 amp hour batteries for a total of 824 amp hours which should be enough to run our air conditioner all night without problem and that's kind of why we did four big batteries in this van. Next to the shutoff, we have our Lynx distributor. This is basically a fancy bus bar, and that is also where our fuses are housed. Each individual Victron component back here is fused through that distributor, and they are easily changed if needed, and we do have spare fuses with us, so <laughs> if we run into that, which hopefully we will not, we are ready to go. Next to that, we have our solar shutoff. This is a main shutoff for our solar panels, so if I need to work on the solar or do anything down here on that side of things, I can just have a main disconnect for the solar. Next to that is our solar controller. It's a 150 volt, 60 amp solar controller. This is the size I needed to run this system on here. I could have gone one size bigger, but doing the math, I was able to get by with the 60 amp. At the very front there is our alternator charger. So that is a 30 amp alternator charger. And while we're running the van, we can charge the batteries going down the road. So if we find ourselves with no power and no sun, we can turn on the van and charge the batteries via the van. We also have shore power on the back of the van. So if we have uh, a non-running van and it's cloudy out, we can plug into someone's house or a campground pedestal and charge our batteries from that. In the very front, right by our hamper, we have all of our fuses and breaker boxes. So the bottom is all the breakers for the 120 volt system, and the top is all fuses for the 12 volt system. There are 18 ports for uh, the 12 volt, and I think we have populated 17 of them. So we are pretty much maxed out on power. I did that on purpose. I split everything up as much as I could, so I still have usable stuff if one thing breaks down. So back here, just to cover this awkward area, um, since this van is a cargo van, there was no windows back here. So we opted just to cover it with quarter inch Baltic birch. I did have to get these wet and bow them intentionally to get them to bolt nicely to the, to the wall. Uh, but I think it turned out really good and it gives us a little space to mount some things um, that we normally would probably just shove under the seat or... <laughs> in Heather's lap. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, the gray tank under the van is a 26 gallon gray tank that the shower and the sink drain into. This tank is specifically made for the ProMaster so it fits up tight onto the floor and bolts down with straps. And so far, we really like it. It's got an auto dump. So we put a 12 volt motor on it and we can just automatically dump it with this flip of a switch. So if you liked this video and you would like to continue watching us on our crazy journey of moving into a van and traveling, please consider subscribing, uh, like the video, comment below if you have any questions, concerns, you want to tell us what you did last night, you don't like the van, do whatever. Just leave us a comment below. So now that you guys know we're going full time in the van, hopefully our name makes a little more sense now and life on the blacktop wasn't just building a van in the driveway <laughs> and uh, ride motorcycles occasionally. So hopefully you'll join us on this journey. We look forward to getting back to traveling again. It's mm -hmm. been a long time since we were able to do that. And uh, I hope you'll join us on our life, life on, on the, the blacktop. blacktop.